what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel today we finally have la panda on the driveway not gonna lie to you guys i've been procrastinating on moving la panda onto the driveway for the suspension overhaul because i know that after this is all said and done la panda is going to be up for sale and i'm kind of sad about it but as you guys know, La Panda was never meant to stay. It was a car I bought for a body kit. And then I didn't really know what to do with the car. Instead, I decided to restore it and I restored it. I then threw La Panda on the market, but I actually flaked on everybody because I found out that this car has back fees. I didn't want to sell the car with back fees. So I took it upon myself to smog it, to register it, to pay all the back fees, insure it. And I've just been driving it and I've actually been enjoying it. I decided that I want to take care of all the other little things first before actually selling La Panda because I want this thing to be like cherry when it goes so in today's video i'm gonna do the back half suspension overhaul back half because i haven't really bought much of the fun stuff yet but let's show you guys what we have As mentioned, this is not everything that I want to change in the car. So starting off for the rear of the car because that's our main focus in today's video. So this suspension bushing right here is for the rear control arm, the 89 plus style, not the 88 style. I want to change all the bushing on the stock LCA. I don't want this car to be flashy, so I don't want to put like aftermarket, like billet stuff underneath the car. So we're going to be doing bushings on that. I'm not 100% certain I want to run the skunk twos on here again, going with the factory everything. I was going to change them out because I already have these, but I think I'm going to save this for the other car that I'm going to build. So I'm not entirely sure with this just yet, but I am going to change the ones out of the car this right here is trailing arm bushings this was actually for the krx but the krx has da trailing arms and they are bigger so i had to order correct one for that car so we're going to be changing that out this right here is the rear drums the drums on this is pretty shot and also the rear wheel cylinder is shot as well so we have two new rear wheel cylinder and then we have the set of drums right here for the rear and uh, these two discs with the brake pads are for the front. Enough talking guys, I'm gonna go ahead and jack this car up on jack stands and start tearing it apart. You guys see that? E-brake is up. But it's still spinning. So last time I drove La Ponda, I noticed that it developed a an exhaust leak and it sounds like it's coming from back here somewhere. I don't know, what is that? Is that a black spot? Is that a hole? I can't tell. But it, it uh it started sounding like open header and hold on a second. Where's the resonator in here? Lapana doesn't have a resonator. And what I'm also noticing is that there's no flange here either. So where's that? This is aftermarket? Or, I mean, I, I don't know. It looks aftermarket because those hangers are welded over there. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, wow, look at this. Holy cow, holy cow. Okay, well, there's my exhaust leak. Okay, that makes sense, because I noticed that this is off-centered as well. Ah. <clears throat> Add that to the list. Very scary. One down, five to go. 
So guys, um, lost a lot of daylight here. I've been uh, actually hanging out with my buddy David right here, and he kind of gave me a hand with this really old retired press. I don't remember how many ton this is, but it was kind of hard to press all the bushings out of the LCA, but nonetheless, we got them all pressed out and uh, sacrificed a few sockets, but we got the bushings all pressed out. We have a few of the race cut out as well too because the socket kind of slipped through and pushed the whole rubber out. So we got them all cleared out. I gave the LCAs a good old scrubbing. I was gonna paint it, but you know what? You're really not gonna see it underneath the car, but I cleaned it up from all the grimes and I am pretty much ready to press in the new bushings. Before we get started, I wanna give a big shout out to my buddy David. This guy right here is a lean custom pins collector and he came through today to hook me up with a wagon. Like, I don't know, hold on, I'm changing glare here real quick. You guys see that? That's a custom Lee customs pin of a wagon on RPF ones with the charge speed wing. Same color as my car. It's got a roof rack on it, a basket. But nonetheless, this is a really sick custom design because you don't really see the wagons on his website. No, I, I don't think, much. right? That's I much. think there was a brown one might have been a red one i'm not entirely sure but this White is definitely one. the first time that i've seen a gray one so i don't know maybe i'll collect or maybe even talk to lean custom to see if i can get one made like exactly of the wagon but um i know for sure they do have crx's too yeah 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 i don't know I, don't make me start a collection i don't need david god damn it <laughs> i appreciate it though thank you no problem man <laughs> so with a combination of the table vice and my press i was doing this control arm the center one, literally, you can just press it on on the table, lube it up with the provided um, lubrication, and you can just press the um, the spacer and the bushing in. This one takes a little bit more effort, but David was able to use a table vise to press these guys in, but to fit the other end on completely flush, we, we're going to use either the press or the it's table vise. So what are you going to do? We can try the vice. We can try the vice. Let's try the vice. Not everybody has, so, not everybody has a press at home. Exactly. So let's, I mean, not everybody has a vice either, but yeah. you can buy a vice and a vice. leave it on the floor because that's what I used to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll pull the vice out whenever I need it. <laughs> so simple enough, lubricate the spacer. The, the outer bushing has three pieces to it, right? So yeah. make sure you lubricate all three pieces and then, um, you know what I'm saying? Show, 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 them, show them the work on the vice grip, David. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. This thing is ready to go. See, the only thing I don't like about the red is when you have like dirt, dust, and stuff, and you get it on the red, it gets dirty. And I always use the Prothane, the black one, over the red one for that reason. But I also think they are a different material. I could be 100% wrong. I think I am wrong, but I prefer the black bushing only because it's a little more stealthier. Let's get it on there just ever so slightly. So, you know, you got my booty old, 50 year old table vice right here. Yes, the key would be to... Simple enough, you know, open it up. I guess go slow and make sure you try to get it in as nice as straight as possible, I guess. And just go slow. Lubrication here is key, guys. Go slow, make sure it's going in straight. You see, you see it slipping in? Slipping in, it's slipping in. Just keep tightening it up, loosening it up. Make sure you're going in nice and straight. Readjust if you need to. God, that damn red is so bright, dude. <laughs> In the camera, it's freaking like, it's noticeable red. I need to. But you know, sometimes you gotta work with what you have, right? I already had all of the red bushing, including a lot of the black ones, but not the correct ones for the lower control arm. So, you know, save money, just use what I got. But if I was to buy it again, it would have definitely been the black ones. David's gonna go ahead and press that last one in right there and then we'll have the LCA done and I'm probably gonna continue tomorrow because exactly. I'm not really in a rush to do the whole rear suspension and doing the trailing on bushing is gonna require some fire and <laughs> a lot more daylight because uh, you know we, we definitely have to retain that race right there so if you guys look it's not even connected <laughs> actually you know what it might be simpler only because it's not attached but I guess we'll we'll figure all of that tomorrow.
so I was right. There is an exhaust leak right there. Mm. I'm afraid that when I weld this, it's gonna keep blowing through. <laughs> Look at that, fall off the bone, dude. Fall off the bone. Toasty. So the exhaust system is sturdy enough. It's got a hanger here, a hanger on the other side of the tailpipe, and then there's two underneath the car. There is a factory hanger right there, but the exhaust system is already firm the way it is. And I pretty much just patched up that hole and I took the hanger off. So I didn't want to add another one and then cause it to, you know, tear apart later down the road. So right now we'll continue back with the trailing arms. So when you press the trailing arm bushing or the race back in, it pretty much goes flush up against the trailing arm edge right here. So once you're flush up, you're good to go. Voila. Yes, sir. So I got both trailing arm bushings installed. I am ready to put this back into the car so we can start assembling the uh, brakes and drums. So let's start with, start with the driver's side. Damn. Mind you guys, we are still on the old camber arm and uh, I am waiting for the new one to show up that I ordered last night. 
I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, brake line on. We'll take this off and put the brand new rear wheel cylinder, the shoes, the assembly, and then the drum. So some odd things that I noticed when I took the drum setup off. Alright guys, so a few odd things that I noticed when I took the drum assembly apart. I noticed that this side, the passenger side, didn't have the retaining, the retaining clip right here for the clevis, the adjuster right here. And it also didn't have the spring that holds it down, right? So that's what this is. There's only one set here and I knew it was missing something, I just couldn't... Um, pointed out until I took out the driver's side right so it looks like I can only assemble the brake assembly on one side fully while the passenger side I'm gonna have to go and find this in the junkyard because I definitely do not want to install the drum without this because this is what keeps the clevis from rotating and uh, or actually locks it in place so I am gonna only do I guess in this video is just the driver's side and I can't complete the whole entire brake system anyways because we still have to do the entire front in order to bleed the back and then drop the car. Yeah, that's the plan. Do the front, bleed the brakes, then drop the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and just grab everything I need for the driver's side and let's get all the new parts installed. Driver's side is completely done, all ready to go. And I just sort of finished up the passenger side and that retaining clip that I was talking about, it goes right here and then an arm comes out and it goes onto this um, adjuster. I don't know if you guys can see that. And uh, what it does is that it locks that adjuster into place so it doesn't turn when the car is running, driving or vibrating. But this side, like I said, I noticed that it wasn't there. And I've been driving La Panda like that. It works. But I'm definitely going to try to go to the junkyard and find... I'm not sure if it's the same as the EGs. Because there's really like no EF in the yard with drums. That I know of. But I do definitely want to source that retaining clip and the spring to ensure that this is not going to loosen up over time. You guys saw in the earlier clips when I was disassembling this, I showed you that the e-brake was up, but this side was still spinning. Even though I had already adjusted it beforehand, before driving this car on the road, it must have loosened up or something. I don't know. Now, the crazy thing is, whoever had this car before me had already done the drums and the rear wheel cylinder. Because the thickness of this pad is literally the thickness of the new one these were brand new and i don't know when it was installed but this one was definitely leaking with the zip ties on it but we have all brand new stuff in here now and i guess right now just to cover all of that up i am gonna throw the drums on it i kind of already adjusted that adjuster to have the pads come out just enough that it's a snug a snug fit with the drum but also still spin freely, right? But still spins freely. That'll break in over time. It'll be a little easier to spin, but if it doesn't um, tighten up, per se, 
I can always do the adjuster to make it much more um, tighter. So uh, that's pretty much it for all I can do tonight, or at least the rear suspension stuff. The camera arm, I ordered a new OEM style one. The toe, I'm going to leave it alone. We got the brand new um, trailing arm bushing, the brand new LCA bushings, as well as all of the rear drum brake setup is all brand new back there. Giving LaPonda that loving before I get rid of it. And uh, we're just pretty much waiting for all the front stuff to show up and we'll, we'll situate all of that in due time. Before I wrap up this video, I went to the PO box yesterday and I got this package in there and it is from Tool Daily out of Tracy, California, which is actually close by. Let's see what's inside. Even the package is from Tool Daily themselves, which is pretty cool. Oh, Tool Daily. Shout out to Tool Daily for hooking it up with a pressure washer gun with a foam cannon. Check it out, yo. <laughs> That's cool. Now it's fortunate that I have a pressure washer. I'd much rather prefer the short handle than the long AK-47. So this, this is, this is definitely more convenient. <laughs> I appreciate it, thank you. Full kit, fittings, nozzles. Oh wow, yeah I definitely wanna try this. The one that I have only has one nozzle, this one has five. Shout out Tool Daily for the foam cannon. I appreciate it very much. If you guys enjoyed the progress update on LaPonda, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I have an idea of the final form LaPonda is going to be in when I get rid of it. So if you guys want to stick around and see how she looks before she goes, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Always remember progress is better than no progress. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.